Hello everybody, hope you well and uh, safe, healthy. Once again, welcome to Let's Talk More with Rumel Gulzar. Today my studio guest is Hana Patel. Since childhood, lots of challenge, but I had a dream, never gave up. Let's find out more. Stay tuned, Let's Talk More. Hana, welcome to Let's Talk More. How are you doing? I'm very well, thank you. Thank you for having me on the show. You're born in Midland and uh, moved into Leicester when you were one. Just share that's your journey growing up in Leicester. Um, so I have lived um, pretty much all my life in Leicester. Um, I was born in Birmingham in Warsaw. Um, I moved here probably when I was about uh, one years old. Um, I used to live in the Melton Road area, so very... Uh, culturally orientated, um, did a lot of celebrations, um, but I've always been to school um, and colleges around the Oadby and Loughborough area. Um, so growing up, we've had a really good childhood. Um, I have a younger brother, um, grown up as friends. Um, my mum and dad divorced when we were pretty young, um, but that came as a challenge in itself. I think now part of what we have been through, as well as uh, the area that I practice in um, has just made me grow up so much. Um, and now that I'm married, uh, I realise a lot of things um, and, it you know, it, it's just helping me. Um, but I love Leicester. I wouldn't think about moving anywhere else. My home, my family, my job, everything is here. I love the fact that it's small. Everyone knows everyone. Sometimes that's not a good thing. Um, but I like, I, it's got a very homely feel. Um, I've lived pretty much across Leicestershire, um, from Oadby, Wixton, Melton Road, um, Scrapped Off, Hamilton, and now we've moved somewhere quieter um, just because a job is far too intense um, and just have a bit of privacy, me and my husband. So, um, But I love the fact that, you know, we, we have the Asian culture, we have... We have a lot of different culture mixes um, uh, and there's just a lot of stuff to do. If I said to you, how you can describe Leicester? How can I describe Leicester? Um, friendly, everyone's friendly here. Uh, never run out of food places. Um, and there's a lot of, um, lot of things to do um, from going out, you know, leisure activities. Um, um, but I, I suppose culture mainly. And I, early on we were chatting and you set off uh, before going on the camera and you said you had, when you were young, you had a very serious illness. Are you able to share that? What happened with you? Yeah, um, so it was, I think I was just turning 18. Um, I, it just came all of a sudden. Um, I, I was actually diagnosed with a benign tumour um, that was on my left kidney. Um it was just very traumatic. Um, at the time, uh, not only was I ill, um, I didn't know the issues that I would be facing afterwards. Uh, my mind, my mindset was, um, I need to go in for an operation. As far as as far as I was concerned, I was going to be sedated. I'm not going to feel a thing. So I was fine. Um, I could see what my family was being put through, um, but that it was it was a very difficult time. Um, it when I was diagnosed, I was actually um finishing my A levels, so I literally had about two or three exams. Um, I was at Loughborough College then, um, and I had to drop out. Um, it came on all of a sudden. Um, so I kind of took a, took a break because I had to. Um, I had an open surgery uh in two thousand and nine. Um, sat around at home feeling sorry for myself, and my mum kind of lifted me up. Uh, push me into going into work um, as well as um, doing something about the passion that I had. Now I've always for a very, from a very young age wanted to go into law. Um, I think part of that played played from the fact that I used to watch a lot of crime series, crime films, um, that's what I love, uh, drama, crime, horror, thriller, all of that. Um, so I had that passion. Um, and then my mum, uh, like I said, she got me into a job. Uh, I started home studying. So I did a degree, uh, distant learning. That was with uh, University of Law. And then I 
once I did that, I was doing some voluntary work in a criminal law firm. Um, that was quite full on. I had the practical side, so I really, really enjoyed that. I think one of the benefits that I had with that was I had practical experience as well as the studying and that kind of complemented each other. Um, I was then sure that that's definitely what I wanted to do. Um, I had to take a little bit of a career break, break again um, whilst I was doing uh, work in the criminal law firm. Um, so this was the following year. So it was around about July 2010. Um, I think it was within six months I had my open surgery. I was diagnosed with by, uh, benign tumours again. Um, and this time it was on top of my left lung. It was in my left lung. Um, I had a keyhole surgery for that. Um, and I think it just motivated me because I came out stronger. Uh, my family were prepared this time because they, they knew I recovered quite well from the first one. Um, so I kind of shift, shifted from having no work and then going into a completely different area of law, which was civil law. Um, I didn't have a passion for it. It wasn't something that I saw myself doing. Um, but I, I, I went into that not realising that today that is my career for life now. Um, and again, I just continued with distant learning, did university, so my LPC, um, a lot of the stuff I just did from home. Um, and it's made me stronger. I think a lot of what I've learned um, has helped because I was motivated, I did it from home. Um, and like I said, um, I was a very social person, going out with friends, going out with family. Um, so just tried to make time. Um, it's just made me headstrong now. You said early on um, you had always have a dream going into law. Why is law? Why law? Um, like I said, I think my passion definitely came from everything that I saw on TV. Um, it then came from when I had the practical side. Um, and I, I think um, <laughs> I'm a very argumentative person. I'm very headstrong. Um, so if I want something, I will make sure I get it. Um, so I, I think all of that combined with the fact that I love, um, I'm a people's person. I love making friends. I love meeting new people. And then the area that I'm doing, um, it complements the fact that I'm actually giving something back, helping people out. Um, and that, that it just transpired one thing from another, um, like I said, courtroom dramas and, you know, that 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 is what I wanted to do, be an advocate uh, and be able to uh, fight in court. Everyone, us or everywhere around the world and every child or grown person or senior citizen, everyone else of have a dream. You've been to so many challenging health issue, being uh, growing up with the, being with your mom that time was a single parent, am I right? Yes. It's a lot of challenge you face during your journey what motivated you not give up your dream and keep pursuing that as a young person um and with my family dynamics um it was very much if you want it you go get it um we come from a working class middle class background um so you know we weren't made of money um i've seen the struggles that my mum and my dad separately individually had to go through um, I think being the eldest sibling as well, um, it was quite a traumatic experience for my brother. So going through that, I had to kind of step up for him as well. Um, so it's someone to look up to. Um, uh, and it's just, it's just the way we've been brought up, which is if you want something, you've got to go and get it and you've got to aspire, have that motivation. And I think within myself, um, I think when you go through something, you know, a, a, quite a serious illness and you don't know what's going to happen at the end of it, you want to make sure you live your life as well as make something of yourself. Um, and I think I just kept pushing, pushing myself because there was a time, I think, probably when I was early 20s, all my friends um, and friends of friends, they were all qualified, they were all working, um, they were somewhere in their life. At that point, I still hadn't been qualified. Um, I was I wasn't doing the usual uh, route so I was thinking now I've got another you know about six seven years um, extended from a three four year degree um, it, but it just kept me going just kept me going 
Let's talk more about your professional journey now. You always have a dream to come be going into the law or join, you had a, started your career with a, doing with the criminal law and then you move into the family law. As, quite, as you said earlier, that you was not looking, but then you make it up now your life to looking after. You now you are head of the um, uh, family law department in, at the Bond Adams. So share that, I believe you started uh, with Bond Adams as a volunteer, I'm right? Just I share did. that journey, please. Okay, so uh, same as my criminal uh, law firm that I worked for. Um, I went in voluntary, and the reason for that was I had no experience. I just about started my studying. Um, the only experience I had of law was uh, my, my A-level studying that I did, but I hadn't finished that. Um, so it was a big transition. Um, again, going to a civil law firm, um, it, I had no experience. So I started off voluntary. Um, like I said, my mum had to drag me in there. I, 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 I wasn't looking forward to it. I didn't know what to expect. Um, but over the years, um, I think I gave my 110%. Um, uh, the senior partner could see that. Um, and I was just getting more and more work in. I was progressing within a good time. Um, I just learnt a lot more. I achieved a lot more. Um, and it's very good for my progression and development as well. Um, but it was a very good transition. I mean, it worked hand in hand. Uh, criminal law was a thing in itself. Um, it, it, it was kind of um, the basis for me. Uh, I, I grew thick skinned. Um, and then going into a very sensitive area, um, you know, you, you go away with these things at home. You constantly think about it, but um, it, it's hard. You've, you've got to try and detach yourself. Um, but I've been here, I've been here with Bond Adams um, nearly 10 years now, actually. Um, so I was promoted as a partner um, at the end of 2017. Um but from from going into uh, going into it as voluntary, um, I then became a fee earner, paralegal, um, and it was just progressing, progressing, progressing. Um, today, I I head the family department. Uh, we are a fully service law firm. Um, the only thing I don't do is residential conveyancing, but um, it's good. The, the firm I work at, um, I've managed to dip my fingers into everything. Um, so as well as heading the family department, um, uh, I manage wills, trust, probate, uh, personal injury, uh, your normal civil litigation, personal injury, um, uh, and corporate and commercial sales as well. So what is the most challengeable when you was doing working with the criminal law firm or the, uh, family uh, law, as a family lawyer is more challenging? I think family law. It has to be family law. Um, Criminal law was very challenging. And I think when I look back now, it was very challenging because I was quite young then. Um, it's difficult to explain. What you see on TV is different. Um, obviously, when you see it in real life, you know, it kind of takes your breath away. Um, and, I, I, you know, I was involved in all types of cases. I used to see witness statements, photographs, um, video evidence. Um, and it was quite disturbing. Um, but the family law, it's more disturbing because there's children involved and the stories you hear, um, you know, it's, it's just not nice. And like I said, you go away at home and you think about it or it's, you know, playing up on your mind through the night. Um, but I, I, I enjoy it. Um, I've learned to detach myself over the years. Um, and it's just trying to stay strong for your clients. Um, and trying to move forward with their matter. Hannah, you had a really fantastic journey from childhood to coming into profession career, from volunteer to head of the law department with the Bond Adams. That's quite uh, uh, challenging himself. So where do you like to see yourself next five years in the law world? I am very comfortable where I am. Um, I manage, I project manage, um, I head the department. I have a very good set of friends and colleagues at work. Um, I think I'm very, very comfortable. For me, um, I don't have kids at the minute, but I need to be comfortable where I am. 
I need to ensure that I have flexibility um, for when that time comes. Um, and both my husband and I, we live a very comfortable lifestyle. Um, so money, money isn't everything to me. Um, like I said, I've grown up with those struggles. I've seen it. Um, I don't ever want to be in a position where you have too much money. You don't know what to do with it. Uh, you become really silly. And equally, I don't ever want to be in that position where you're financially struggling. Um, you know, when you've got your own car, house and everything else that comes with it. Um, so I think I'm very comfortable. Um, I really enjoy it. I've got, I love doing what I do. Um, I have so much flexibility, good work, colleagues, friends, um, a very good boss. Um, and I think flexibility is very important for me. Can I ask you what you learn from your own life experience? Um, never give up. I think that's the key, never give up. If you have a dream or aspiration, you've just got to keep working at it. There were times when I really didn't think I could do it. Um, there was a few times I had my uh, confidence knocked back. Um, professionally, you know, I, I understand now. Professionally, um, um, people only want, only want to talk to solicitors um, or even trainees, um, especially when you say you've not even done your degree or you have no knowledge of it. It's very, very difficult. Um, so for me to have these opportunities at two law firms, um, not having anything um, was great. Um, but like I said, you keep pushing at it. Um, you develop, you reflect um, and just change, you know, any weaknesses that you have, just change that. So Anna, that's fantastic. And um, what have your journey been through? And you never give up your dream. And what's your message to people out there? They have a dream, but they have a facing the similar challenge, what's your message to them? Don't give up, uh, motivate yourself. Um, only you can make it happen. Um, and if you have a good support network, friends and family, or whoever it is, uh, turn to them. Um, I, I only realized this for myself. Um, I, I had a lot of support network. Um, there are people there to help you as well. Anna, thank you very much. What a fantastic story and a good luck for future. Thank you very much for watching. I hope we all learn something from Hana Patel's life journey. What a fantastic journey from volunteer to head of the department at the local law firm. I always say, if you have a dream, never give up. Like Hana Patel, she pursue it and she achieve it. Be a game changer. So stay tuned. I will be back next week with a new life journey, new story from around the world. Let's talk more with Rumel Gulzar.